Welcome to this special episode where I'll take a look on the cancelled PowerVR version of Wave Racer. In July of 1995, Namco released Wave Racer into the arcades running on their powerful System 22 arcade board and it quickly became a hit worldwide. Plans to make a home version emerged later in November of the same year when it was announced that Namco had formed an alliance with NEC and Videologic to port three of their System 22 arcade games to the PowerVR on the PC. These three games were Tekken, Air Combat 22, and of course Wave Racer. At the same time, Namco was also planning their successor to the System 22 that would be named the System 33, which were rumored to contain four PowerVR ships working together as a scalable linked interface. It is possible that porting the arcade titles to the PC either were part of the deal for the new arcade board or were a project where Namco's programmers could get familiar with the power VR ship. At this point in time Namco had little experience in making PC games and for them as the Japanese company to suddenly embark on developing games with cutting edge graphics for the PC is a bit odd. This is of course all just speculation from my side but nobody can deny that the announcement gave NEC and Videologic some great developer support for their power VR. In January of 1996, Videologic claimed that the conversion would not only be faithful, but actually surpass the arcade version. Gamers were excited, and in the mid of 1996, a demo of Rave Racer showed up in the gaming media, most notably on the television show Cyberman. Today, dedicated 3D graphics cards which help solve that problem are beginning to appear, but we thought we'd give you an update on the system we think might beat the rest, Power VR. And in the August issue of Next Generation. The demo was showing graphics that was way ahead of anything on the PC or any console for that matter. And it was not even finished, as Power VR's lightning techniques had not yet been implemented. PC gamers were at this point used to playing racing games like Screamer, which were running in the low res 320 by 200 unless you had a very powerful machine. According to the Next Generation article, it was promised that Rave Racer would run at 30 FPS in 640 by 480 on a Pentium 133. All this at a slight lower polygon count and half the frame rate compared to the arcade version. Would this be possible? Most likely yes. Just look at what the PowerVR bundle version of Ultimate Race delivered on a Pentium 133. A game similar to Rave Racer with graphics that is equal or even better. Also the demo itself are a good indication. While the demo probably didn't run on the targeted processor, it was running on prototype cards called the Midas 1 and Midas 2 with alpha drivers and an early version of SGL, which were PowerVR's native API. All this means that there probably were room for increased performance. Comparing the arcade version with the Power VR demo is a bit tricky since so little material exists today, but it seems it was quite close to the arcade version in terms of graphics. The demo was never available to the public, and what is known to have survived is the few clips you see in this video, along with the screenshots in the Next Generation article. No screenshots of video was ever released of Tekken or Air Combat 22 as far as I know. In late 1996, the Power VR card finally shipped and the three Namco games were not part of the launch. 1996 faded into 97, and not a single word was ever heard about release dates. Rave Racer for the PC never came out, and Videologic were basically stuck with Ultimate Race as their exclusive launch title. Why the PC ports from Namco never came to be is not known, but it is possible that it was all tied in with the power v VR driven arcade board, which also never saw the light of day. If anyone has a copy of this demo laying around, then feel free to contact me.